Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for June 7th, 2021. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott and I work for Adafruit for, on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them in CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. That's the short link for it. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. If the meeting time has changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, you can add you to the CircuitPythonistas role on uh, on Discord. There is also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. The video of this meeting will be posted to the Adafruit YouTube channel, and the audio is released as a podcast. There's a note stock to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document, and we'll read them off during the meeting for you. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view par only parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you, an op gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pin messages to find the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a t statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. The hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an important is an opportunity to sync up what we've been up to. Sync on <laughs> sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what we we've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. So that um, that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I'll get started on community news. So community news is a preview of the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, uh, which is released every Tuesday morning. Uh, if you want to join that, go to adafruitdaily.com and click the Python for Microcontrollers uh, checkbox there. Um, and so these are the, a preview, but not all of everything from the upcoming one. So first, uh, CircuitPython 7.0 Alpha 3 and 6.3.0 Stable have been released. Uh, CircuitPython 6.3.0 is the latest minor revision of CircuitPython and is a new stable release. Notable changes in 6.2 include many new boards, many corrections to existing boards, and the addition of a consistent board.led to most boards. Uh, and there's links there to the Adafruit blog and the GitHub release notes. CircuitPython 7.0 Alpha 3 is uh, an alpha release of CircuitPython 7.0. It is relatively stable, but contains a number of issues still to be addressed for 7.0. The Python APIs it presents may change. Notable additions to 7.0 include runtime customization of USB devices, merging in of MicroPython fixes and enhancements as of MicroPython 115, simplification, uh, simplifications to the RGB status LED codes, and a clocking fix for a few samples of the RP2040 boards. Next up in Raspberry Pi news, the uh, RP2040 single chips are going on sale now for a dollar. On Tuesday, June 1st, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced that RP2040 microcontroller chips are available from their approved reseller partners in single unit quantities, allowing people to build their own projects and products on Raspberry uh, Pi Silicon. Next up, there's this uh, cool project, Pi RTOS, which is a real time operating system for CircuitPython. Um, check out the Adafruit blog and GitHub there uh, from the notes doc. Next, 
Adafruit's been switching the default branch of CircuitPython library repositories from master to main. Over the course of the next few weeks, Adafruit is switching the CircuitPython repositories uh, to use main as their default branch instead of master. This change is a continuation of past efforts to depart from language deeply rooted in centuries of racism and the subjugation of people based on the color of their skin towards language that is inclusive for everyone. Uh, these changes have sparked others in the electronic and maker communities, spark fun, make, and more to think about the history of words, how they're used and changes we can make together. And there's an Adafruit blog. D. Harada, who's leading the work says, uh, next few days, probably only 90 libraries left to go. So thank you in advance to Dylan for doing that. Um, it's great to see that making lightning progress as everything that she does goes okay uh q a with the programming with microcontrollers and circuit python author armstrong sabero a press recently published the book programming microcontrollers and circuit python adafruit asked author armstrong sabero some questions about both he and the book and had armstrong on our show and tell to and that's it uh this is uh, preview of the weekly newsletter. Um, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at www.adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To, to contribute your own news or project, edit its next week draft on GitHub by going to github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter and check out the drafts folder there and submit a pull request. There's a way, uh, if you click the little pencil icon in the top right while looking at the draft, you'll be able to edit it. Um, you may also tag a tweet with hashtag circuitpython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And as always, thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together and leading the charge on that. All right, let's go to the second section. The second section is uh, State of CircuitPython Libraries in Blinka. This is a chance for us to take a, a, a more objective statistical view of the project and uh, kind of ground ourselves in, in some numbers that we want to, that we keep track of um, so that we don't get too far from the reality uh, here. So if, uh, overall, we've had 46 pull requests merged. This is over the last week. We had 29 different authors uh, new folks for me reading the, this off are GM Paris, uh, Gomi HGY, Stone Hippo, um, lots of Wolfman JM, Daniel Ballin, uh, Repad is new, Craig Not Snowman, uh, DJIX123 uh, are all like pretty new folks. We had 15 reviewers, so thank you to all our reviewers. You know, without reviewers, you can see there's like a two to one ratio between reviewers and authors. So uh, the more reviewers we have, the more authors we can support. So um, if you're interested in reviewing, uh, leveling up your CircuitPython game, let us know. We're happy to help you do that. Uh, issues wise, we had 26 closed issues by 11 people and 13 open by 12 people. So we're net down 13, which is amazing. Um, thank you to all the people involved in the issues as well. Um, we really appreciate it. And let me go to the core. So for the core, uh, we had 23 pull requests merged from 17 different authors, which is awesome, and six reviewers. So uh, we're definitely like have not quite the, the same ratio as before. So more reviewers are always welcome. Uh, we have 19 open pull requests. Uh, the oldest is 257 days old. And we have a couple more that are just uh, turning the corner on the 200 days mark. So I think the, the main call to action here for the core is like, really, if people want to get started with it, um, please take a look at those, these pending PRs that we have open. Um, it would be great to close them. I know there's a couple that are specifically for adding board support. Uh, so they should be really easy or relatively easy to pick up and kind of finish to completion. Uh, of course, boards are a little bit trickier because like, if you don't have it, it's, it's hard to test. Um, but yeah, we'd love people to take a look at what those are. Um, 
Mark says, is there a process to take over an older PR? Just comment and ask if the author, if the original author is about. Yeah, I think um, you could chime in there saying like, hey, I'm interested in working on this. Um, and if you have edit rights, uh, which we're happy to add uh, people to, um, you can, uh, you should be able to actually, usually you're able to push to the original branch for the PR as well. Um, so that's what I mean by takeover. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, Mark, just uh, I'm happy to help you do that. Okay. Um, issues wise for the core, we had 13 closed issues by six people and seven open by seven people. So we're even net down as, uh, as well. We have 458 open issues. Uh, and uh, the way that we keep, kind of keep track of our issues is we have milestones. Milestones, we tend to have uh, give us an idea of like how soon we want to work on things um, and kind of what category to some degree they are as well. Uh, we have four issues that are not assigned to milestones. So these are ones that no one's looked at and categorized. So we always want to make sure and, and take a look at those because they could be urgent and critical. Um, we have three open issues under the 6.x bug fixes, which are probably the most critical. And then we have 56 open issues for 7.0. And then we have 375 long-term ones that are just general long-term stuff. Um, and with that, uh, overview the, that I have here is very straightforward. Thanks to Dan. 6.3.0 is stable and released and 7.0 alpha 3 is released as well. So uh, folks, Please test those out and let us know what you find. Um, I think 7 is actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I think we'll be able to get that out in not too long. Um, although we're, we're still changing some APIs with that. OK, so that's uh, the core overview and the core stats. Uh, let me kick it over to Katni for the libraries. Thanks, Scott. Hmm? So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, including uh, everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as some extras such as Cookie Cutter and the Community Bundle. Um, so this week, we had 22 pull requests merged from 14 different authors and 12 reviewers. Uh, we had a significant number of them that were older than two weeks, including one that was 206 days old. So that's been really great to see leaving us with 44 open pull requests. Uh, we had 12 issues closed by six people and four open by four people, leaving 304 open issues. Uh, if you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information <clears throat> and more, uh, including open pull requests, open issues, and some library infrastructure issues. Um, feel free to check out the open issues. You can search by label. Um, you can also take a look at the open pull requests and see whether or not there's anything that interests you. Uh, if you want to get started reviewing, check out the open pull requests. Uh, take a look at them. Uh, you can check for syntax. You can check for spelling. Um, if you have the hardware, you can test it. And then leave a comment and let us know. And once you've done that a few times, uh, and once you're comfortable with that, we can level you up to actually joining our review team. Uh, if you're interested in actually contributing to code, check out the issues. Uh, in terms of New libraries this week, we had one new library, Simple Text Display, and a number of updated libraries. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of contributing, if you're new to Git and GitHub, don't worry about it. We have a guide, and uh, we're always available to help. We want to help you contribute in what any way that works for you. So overall, we're seeing steady work on getting through the older open PRs, as well as keeping up with new PRs. It's great to see all the work being done, both on the Adafruit and community libraries. We're working on getting all the libraries moved, of, moved over to main from master as the default branch. So please verify whether the library you're working on has been moved and work within this change. It should be completed within the next few days. If you need help moving your local uh, repo over to main, feel free to ask us on Discord. It's a pretty simple process, but the easiest way to do it if you don't have any current work is to just start with a fresh clone. Um, but we are um, around and we can help you out uh, if you want to actually go through the steps to uh, do that update locally and keep um, anything that you're working on. And that's where we are at the libraries. Thanks, Katni. All right, next up, uh, let's get the latest Blinka updates from maker Melissa. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi. And 
MicroPython and other single board computers. Um, so that this week we had one pull request merged by one author and two reviewers. Uh, that leaves three open pull requests, uh, and there were one closed issue by one person and two open by two people, leaving a net of 57 open issues amongst all the uh, different repositories. Uh, and there were 5,380 PyPI downloads in the last week, and we are currently supporting 75 boards. Uh, overall, um, there hasn't been a whole lot of work this last week, mostly just little fixes, um, but... It's good to see some work at least being done on it. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. All right. Uh, next up, we have another section called Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks for the work that they've been doing. Um, it's a great way to highlight just all the different amazing things that people are doing uh, and giving uh, credit where credit is due. So this is done as a round robin. So I'll start, and then we'll go through the list of folks in the notes doc. Um, and circle back around when we hit the bottom of the alphabet. So, uh, first for me, um, a quick, uh, single hug report to Antonio, who is, uh, working on the iOS app for the BLE file transfer stuff for collaborating on debugging glider, uh, which is the app and circuit Python. Um, it's always great to work with somebody who's like, uh, totally willing that the bug might be theirs, but also could could be my bug as well. So it's really, really collaborative, and I appreciate uh, Antonio for working with me on that. All right, and next, let's go to V923Z. Thanks, Scott. Um, I haven't been here for a while, so I have a number of people to, to acknowledge. Uh, first, yourself for fixing the macros in Microlab. Then, um, then for um, helping out with uh, documentation for Circuit Python, uh, uh, Circuit, yeah, Rick, right, uh, Circuit Python compilation. Then Jeff for uh, tying up um, number of loose ends, especially in the workflow files, and um, and uh, running after the garbage collector issue. And finally, I would like to th thank David Glody for raising uh, an interesting question. Um, he wanted to upscale his um, thermal camera images um, using uh, 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 Microlab. And um, uh, we, we ha had been discussing this question for quite a while, um, um, considered adding a new function to, to the core. But it turned out that, um, that you can do that already with slices. And it also turned out that um, Pythonic code is not necessarily uh, efficient. I'm I'm really glad that he um, he, he um, went to great lengths um, benchmarking the the proposed solution. So um, thanks for that, David. Um, and um, finally, <laughs> um, what what came out of this is is a small chapter in the um, in the documentation and in particular the. Uh, the uh, image upscaling issue you can find in the link that I have just posted. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Always happy to have you drop in the meeting. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a quick couple to read off. Uh, first from Dan, who's absent, says group hug, including all of those who helped with, supported, and tested 630 and 70 alpha 3. The amount of work in these releases is phenomenal. Next up, is Deharada. Um, yeah, so one second. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, hug report to Lady Ada for helping me out with uh, MOSFETs and stuff like that uh, because I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then a group hug. Awesome. Thanks, Dylan. All right, next up we have a couple text folks, so I'll read those off as well. Hirefax says group hug. I was out last week. And next up is Foamy Guy, uh, who says, uh, Hug Report to ask Patrick W for reviewing a PR to make Cookie Cutter behave nicer with spaces in the library name and catching several spots that needed changes that I missed. Uh, next, Le Samurai Propre for working on some solutions for the version string of the PyPI stubs upload and to the Ruiz brothers for making a super cool functional rotary dial or rotary encoder crank in a single print design. 
Next up is Jeff. Hi, sorry, I'm just Googling the crank because that's something that <laughs> I wanted and I didn't know they'd done it. Um, yeah, I just have a group hug this week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jeff. All right, next up is Jerry. Yeah, likewise, a group hug for me. Nice work, everybody. Thanks, Jerry. All right, next up we have notes from Jose David, who says, hug report to Keith E.E. E. for his first PR in CircuitPython, also for reviewing my documentation PR. Hug report to Daniel Ballin and Blue Jazz CHN for sticking with the PR. A hug report to the Samurai Prepre for all of the work this week. It was a lot of fun. And hug report to Jerry N for answering a question, I assume. And next up is Katni. All right. So my first hug report is to uh, Carter, Mark Gambler, and Jay Frasian for helping me uh, test some code. <clears throat> I was having some really weird... Uh, behaviors that I couldn't figure out, and um, subsequently a hug report to Carter for figuring out that the Seesaw library has a bug. Um, hug report to Les Samurai Pupre for posing the idea of a circuit Python community code of conduct. Um, I'll talk more about that later. And um, a hug report to Dylan for all the work on moving the circuit Python libraries to the main default branch. Thanks, Katni. All right, next up I have notes from Mark. Uh, Mark says, Hug report to Foamy Guy and Katni for some suggestions I passed on to someone on Twitter looking for a CircuitPython development environment. And last up, we have Maker Melissa. I wanted to give a hug report to Le Samurai Pupre for uh, Jose David for testing and fixing an issue with Blinka on the Pico with I square C uh, and a group hug to everyone else. Thanks, Melissa. All right, that's hug reports. Uh, next up, we have the section status updates. Status updates happens in a similar way as around Robin, but this time we want to hear a little bit about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week. Um, and it will just go the same same style. So I will start. So I got directory listings and file readings and writings working from Glider, which is the... Um, Beely file transfer app. Uh, connecting is still a bit painful. Um, we don't correctly store bonding information and use it well and all that stuff. So a lot of forget this device and reconnect sort of stuff. I'm working on improving the internal identity keys management so that scanning a resolvable address of a bonded peer actually gets resolved by the soft device. This should hopefully allow the test script to reconnect after bonding. And I'm out starting Thursday through all of next week to visit family. So I'm taking a vacation and I'm very excited about it. Um, yep, that's it for me. I will out, be out next week, but I'll be back in two weeks. And no deep dives for the next two weeks as well. All right, let's kick it over to V923Z. Thanks, Scott. Uh, so first of all, have a great time. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, so in the last couple of months, I, I um, have still been working on um, on Microlab. Um, reviewed a couple of PRs. Um, someone added a complete module to um, um, to SciPy, the, the SciPy port actually, with two functions. Um, fixed a number of corner cases. Um, Kevin Waters um, pointed out that some some functions didn't behave properly. Um, I, I think I sorted out everything and. Then added out uh, added um, a CMake support for uh, ESP32 and um, RP2040. Um, some of it came from Gadgetoid. Um, then fixed the garbage collection issue. Um, Jeff was uh, instrumental in that regard, and and worked on the docs. Um, so in the coming weeks, I would like to um, work on on uh, adding complex, uh, complex support and um, the block read support. I, I will come back to that uh, in the weeds. And um, I would also like to add the option to reduce the firmware size as, at the expense of RAM. Um, someone brought this up on, on uh, GitHub and um, I am coming around. So um, I, I was first a bit uh, reluctant, but I, I am coming around and uh, uh, we'll try to see if um, if, if, if it's workable. Um, and I 
wanted to to tinker with electronics, but there is a there is a shortage of uh, ICs at the moment, so I, I uh, have to put it on the back burner, and instead I decided to try some Julia or, or learn to some, uh, some Julia. So these are my plans for the coming weeks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, V923Z. All right, let me go to the top. All right, um, from Dan. Dan, uh, who is uh, out today, says, release CircuitPython 6.3.0 and 7.0 Alpha 3. Working on keypad scanning support. One button per pin is about to be tested. Matrix support and then shift register support will follow. And next up is D. Harada. Uh, yep, so last week I started uh, moving on certain pilot libraries to main. Um, and then just like doing some messing around with PWMing LED strips using MOSFETs. Um, and this week, uh, finishing up the move to main and probably a few other random things I'm forgetting. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dylan. All right, next up we have notes from D. Harada. Or not, sorry, from Higher Effect. <laughs> we just did D. Harada. Uh, last week, uh, Higher Effect was off. This week, uh, finish all the sleep testing sketches plus documentation and submit for testing. Next up we have notes from Foamy Guy. Foamy Guy says, uh, worked on the action steps for uploading stubs to PyPI. PR created, and I think it will work once Py. PI credentials are added to secrets. Renaming the rest of the, of the display I.O. widget libraries to include org in the name and other changes required by this. I made some code for Rotary Trinky to use it as a brightness and scrolling crank. And next up is Jeff. Hi. So last week, my main work was on the ESP32S2 camera input. And this week is continuing to work on that. Um, and also adapting in some uh, code to initialize a different camera module called the OV2640 based on demo code. And the status of that is I had some data coming in in the middle of last week, but it's corrupt, and I don't exactly know what the corruption was because I only had an ASCII viewer uh, that I could do, and that's not so great. Anyway, um, and another note that I may need to revise or just uh, throw out the code that I adopted in as a library because Espresso has done at least two major incarnations of this camera library. There there was one in one examples repository and now there's another one in a separate uh, specifically camera repository that is pretty different. That new one works better, but it's the old one that I based all my initial work on. Uh, as far as the parallel image capture class in CircuitPython goes, there are going to be incompatible API changes. Initially, with the uh, examples of the SAMD51 and the Raspberry Pi RP2040, the pins that were that had the parallel data were always sequential. But on the ESP32S2, they can be in any order, non-sequential, um, and so that means we have to change the API. We're not going to keep the old one since it was never released. Uh, and kind of uh, making clear what I was saying a minute ago. Our primary interest in hardware has changed from the OV7670 to the OV2640. According to Lamour, the OV7670 is obsolete. You can hardly get it anymore, so they would not make a product out of it. The OV2640 is pretty readily available. It's what ships with Espressif's um, Kaluga dev kit, and it's probably the one that they would build a product around at Adafruit. So that's why in a number of ways, this is kind of starting from uh, zero and why it's taking a long time to get something going. And in outside of CircuitPython news, I fixed my kitchen sink this weekend and did not have to call a plumber. I'm really happy about that. Nice. Good job, Jeff. All right. Next up, we have notes from Jose David. Jose says, last week, testing and reviewing some PRs uh, like Bitbang.io. Working on a PR for the issue on the SI4713 and some, some documentation, and reviewing a PR for the SGP40. This week, uh, review the PR for the MAX31865, modify learn guides for the BME280, DPS310, and the Blinka with MicroPython as it uses the BME280 sensor. Uh, PR reviews and testing is needed. Next up is Katni. 
All right. So last week, published the Rotary Trinky Guide, uh, finalized testing of the page replace feature in Learn. Uh, let's see, published the Adafruit CircuitPython simple text display library. Um, somebody made a request uh, for this to be pulled out. It was in the Clue library. Basically, um, it allows you to display lines of text um, on a display, display I.O. display very easily. Um, and I wrote it into the Clue library originally with the plan of um, using it with the Clue sensors. And now we have boards like um, Funhouse, which also has um, also has sensors on it and a display, so they wanted to be able to use it with Funhouse. Uh, so we split it out into its own helper library. Is the short version of the story. Um, fixed the rotary trinky uh, board files, the um, actual PCB files, uh, the fritzing and the pinout diagrams. Um, we wanted to match what we put in Circuit Python, which it turns out was swapped. Um, so we we matched circuit python um across the board uh so it was sort of like uh fixing it backwards um versus updating all of the pin uh definition and so on to match um and that meant i learned some uh, eagle stuff this last week as well and then uh started the slide trinky guide this week huge list um, update CircuitPython.org to include the 7x bundle. Update the README for the project bundler. Um, the project bundler is now going to include two folders, one for 6x and one for 7x. And the README uh, doesn't refer to any of that because that's new, so the README needs to be updated to match. I uh, need to submit a PR to update the code of conduct on cookie cutter. We updated um, some real basic stuff, uh, and we, but we never updated it on cookie cutter apparently, which I didn't notice until um, a discussion came up about, um, which is the next thing, which once I've submitted that PR and it's been merged, I'm going to submit another PR um, to start a discussion on how to word the community code of conduct. Um, it was brought up that the Adafruit CircuitPython code of conduct um, was going into community libraries, which indicates, uh, you know, email supported Adafruit or contact community moderators and so on and so forth. If you're running into issues and uh, it doesn't really apply to the community libraries. So um, we're gonna um, we're gonna start a PR and then open a discussion on how to word it more generally to refer to project maintainers and um, uh, and projects instead of um, specifically to Adafruit and the um, uh, and and Circuit Python. Um, the Feather RP2040 CircuitPython install page was written before we created the template. And so we're going to replace it with the template, which will actually be the first time that we'll be using the page replace feature that was uh, recently added. So that'll be good. Um, I'm adding a CircuitPython NeoPixel example to the Rotary uh, Encoder QT breakout guide. It's not intuitive how to use the NeoPixel. And um, somebody left feedback on the guide about uh, having some more information about that. Um, and it took me quite a bit to get it going. So I figured out an example to the guide um, so that other folks don't have to figure that out. Um, and then file an issue on the Seesaw library regarding the behavior of brightness in NeoPixel. Um, we're not sure how we're going to fix it um, in terms of whether we're actually going to make it work right or whether we document how it currently works. It works the way it does because Seesaw is small. So um, it doesn't have the doesn't have the beefiness to handle how brightness is normally calculated. Um, so it may just end up being documentation. Um, the Max 98357 fritzing apparently has an incorrect description. Need to fix that. Um, the AMG 8833 Featherwing was never added to the AMG 8833 guide. Um, in terms of the board files and the downloads page. So I'm going to be adding that. Then continuing on the slide Trinky guide. And finally, um, starting the new um, QT RP2040 Trinky guide um, once I get the rest of this done. <laughs> it's only a short list, right? Yeah, just, just a couple things. <laughs> awesome. Well, keep up the good work, Katni. 
Thank you. All right. And that's it for... No, I take that back. Sorry. <laughs> Almost forgot Maker Melissa. Maker Melissa, you're up. Okay, let's see. Last week, I finished up updating uh, the Google Steps on an e-ink desk calendar guide. I worked on a guide for running voice to JSON and said Python to create a nice custom customizable voice assistant. Uh, I updated several more boards on circuitpython.org, and this week I'm finishing up the voice to JSON guide and uh, possibly I'll start a new guide with, uh, with Microsoft Lobe. Awesome. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. All right, now we're done with status updates. Thank you, everyone. Uh, now we're on to in the weeds. This is the last section. This is a chance for us to discuss any sort of longer form stuff that we need to discuss. Uh, if you have topics, please drop them in there now. We do have one to start with. Uh, otherwise, we'll keep going. Um, OK, so let's kick it over to V923Z for the first topic. Thanks, Scott. So a uh, short one, um, what is the deadline for 7.0? Um, or is it already past that? And I would, uh, in particular, like to call out uh, to uh, to Jeff um, and ask whether he still wants to 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 um, um, bring in the implementation of this block reader um, before seven seven zero is out. Um, I don't really know what that pull request does. Um, if it's good and you put it in your main branch. No, well, uh, actually, then so we'll get I, it next time we we pull in my uh, micro lab. So right, the, the the problem is uh, so um you you mentioned that you wanted to to convert um, uh, RGB um, five sixty five data um, mm -hmm. or or operate on on such data, and um, um so I implemented um, something along these lines. Um, the the original request came from uh, Abraham um, at OpenMV. Um, and I, I would love to, to merge it. The, the problem is I, I would need a second opinion. Um, and um, somehow they, they, they were enthusiastic at the be beginning, but then I, I haven't gotten any, any feedback. So uh, if, you, if you want that merged, then, then you would have to, have to say something about the code or the implementation. Um, Otherwise, I would leave it open uh, as a draft because um, well, this is this is a, a huge change, um, not in terms of, of NumPy or or SciPy because it's it's not going to change anything on that side. Um, still, I I don't want to bring in something that's um, sort of um, half baked or, the, or or well not properly implemented. And um, that's why I would, would need someone to, to uh, look over my shoulder. Yeah, so I see there's a, there's a lot of code here. I really can't give uh, kind of a snap okay, uh, so decision or, my, my, or advice. No, my, my point was not that, that you should comment on it right away. Uh, the question was whether I should mount an effort to to tidy it up um, before seven zero is out, or or you don't think that's um, that's that's relevant for seven zero, or um, or it's simply not so urgent. Uh, I can I can gladly put this off. <laughs> I don't I I don't think it's like if you have any doubts about it, I would say it's not critical, right? Like. Like we try to keep our pace up, so we'll always have a chance to integrate new stuff that you're doing. Um, in terms of seven zero timeline, like I would start, I, I would like to start pushing us to like finalize all the all of the API changes we're doing. Uh -huh. um, and I haven't looked at this PR, but if your PR is just adding additional APIs, right? Like we can do that whenever. Um, but I can I can tell you what this is about. So. Um, it would allow you to um, to define your own data structure or data container, uh, whatever it is, um, on the C side, um, and then you you uh, could simply define um, a function pointer, um, and I would take that when, whenever I have to sum, for example, um, 
um, a, a, an image. Um, I don't have to get the whole image. I, I would simply take the function pointer from you, and then um, um, you have to, or, or well, whoever is using this this feature has to has to implement the function pointer mm -hmm. or the, the function that the pointer points to. Um, um, to, to return values uh, mm -hmm. that could be consumed by the, um, the mm -hmm. micro micro lab um, uh, functions. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, well, I, I don't know how important it is. So, um, I, I know that it, it can can bring in some some nice features. So, for example, if you have a, a megapixel image which doesn't fit in, in into RAM. Then you could sim uh, still uh, do numerical computation on it, uh, simply calling um, microlab or numpy functions. Um, if you implement the, the function pointed to by the function pointer. Right. Um, so um, this is sort of a, 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 an abstraction layer between between uh, microlab and whatever you have, and I don't even have to know what you have you implement it your way I, I don't even have to see it right, right. Um, and then you can you can simply hook into all of the functions that um, that that work with with, with numerical data mm -hmm. and which are already implemented in in microlab um, so um, one one uh, um, idea was and I think it was put by by Jeff that um, that you you could then uh, Calculate the average of an image, which which is encoded in uh, RGB 565. Right. Um, you just have to provide a readout function, and uh, mm -hmm. with that you are done. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the PR about. Um, I I uh, implemented a couple of um, um, test cases. Um, um, I don't know some mean and a couple of others. Uh, before before doing everything or, or uh, implementing it for for every function i i would need some some feedback from some somewhere mm -hmm. um and um that's that's why i'm bringing this up um it's not urgent for me um this was a, an external request um somehow it it has been abandoned but um um if you if you see some some potential in it then then someone should should Chip in with a right. with, with an opinion on the on the implementation or the or the or the concept actually. Right. No, I think I think you're approaching it the right way. Like, um, you know, it it's good to make sure that you have people who are bought into the functionality besides yourself. And right. I would say that that's what I would expect on the Circuit Python side too. Of like Jeff or or maybe David like stepping up and saying like, yeah, I do want to integrate this into Circuit Python because, mm -hmm. you, like you're saying, like we do have these structures that are storing data in these packed formats and like for interoperability and in right. Microlab, like that makes sense. But just like what you're saying is like I, you know, when we've talked as well, is like I, I I leave this part to other people so. I, th okay. I think for our case, like, it's good that you're on here and you're you're advertising it in case people do want it. But I think, mm -hmm. I think it's totally fine for us to wait uh, and see. Okay, right. Okay, then then let's leave it at that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for all your work. It's uh, yeah, Micro Lab is really thanks, great. Thanks for the prototype. Um, you know, I probably mentioned this image thing in passing, and you know, it's it would be nice to have someday, but I don't think. Uh, for Adafruit or Adafruit products that we need to rush this in in order to be able to do image processing on RGB 565 values. There may be a camera someday. It's it's down the line. It's not scheduled or anything. So. Okay. Well, it's, it's, as I said, it's not urgent for me. I, I have other things to do. So uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to, to put this out into the open. If, if anyone has interest interest and then um they should speak up and uh, 100 percent yeah um comment on the on the um uh, draft that that was basically my point okay thanks thank you all right uh and last up we have katney so i wanted to reiterate uh the mm -hmm. move to main um because we are deleting the master branch to avoid the confusion that 
we did end up with um, leaving it in CircuitPython. Um, I haven't tested yet to find out what error it throws. Um, you really should be working on your own branch anyway. So it's, it's something that should be pretty seamless. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody remembers and understands that this is a pretty major change. Um, and to update everything before you start um, work uh, locally, uh, make sure you're, you're running the latest version of the libraries. And um, like Dylan said, this is something that should be done uh, in the next few days completely. Um, the Git and GitHub guide will need to be updated. It currently refers to both master and main because of the fact that we had um, interim time where some were on main and some were on master. Um, but it does explain how to deal with with a main branch. So um, while the guide will need to be updated because it refers to both, it does actually refer to main at the moment. Um, so if you need assistance on uh, working with a different default branch, um, it's there. But I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew this because um, the deletion of the master branch is going to be the thing that possibly folks run into if they're not um, aware of this or paying attention, um, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really glad we're doing this. This is absolutely excellent. Um, yep. It's something I've wanted to do for a while, so I'm glad to see that we're doing it. Um, but it does affect contributors. So mm -hmm. I wanted to reiterate that. Um, I will probably continue to do that for the next couple weeks, um, just so that, mm -hmm. you know, if folks are listening in uh, once in a while, they, they can get the benefit of that as well. Right. That was all. Ah, thank you. And I, I do want to point out that like we didn't delete the master branch in the core for a long, long time and did have things crop up that that were caused by leaving it there. So I think you're totally right in just deleting it right now. Yeah, I thought about it and just decided it wasn't worth the hassle um yep. because it's much easier if it just throws an error and folks cannot push to the wrong branch yep. um open prs uh have been hit or miss as a side note um everybody who's got an open pr uh be aware that we can go in and change uh what branch it pushes to but every so often it auto closes a pr and it cannot be reopened um, if we run into that, we will contact you and ask you to resubmit, or if it's something that, um, is, uh, something that someone submitted and, and is not around, um, we will probably recreate the PR ourselves, um, so that we don't lose, uh, contributions. Um, this is rare, but it did happen. Interesting. So I just want to give a heads up. Uh... I don't. I, I actually found it in... The question is, do you have a link to one of those PRs that was closed? Um, I could find it, uh, but I, I found I had notes from the first library that we moved over, which was the Circuit Playground library. And in those notes, I wrote that one of the PRs auto-closed and could not be reopened. Um, so I would have to dig through the Circuit Playground library to find uh, a PR that was closed that couldn't be reopened. So I'm not... Sure. I don't know that Dylan's run into that since she started um, the rest of the libraries. But the first time I did it, I ran into a problem. It could also be something that um, GitHub was working through, if uh, if you think about it, because this has now become a much more commonplace situation. Um, and it may just have been buggy uh, early on. Right. Um, but anyway, just just know that if we run into something with an open PR, uh, we'll be sure to uh, contact the the author and um, you can link to a closed PR so we can keep track of any discussion and that won't be lost. It'll just, it won't be on the current PR. Sounds good. Thanks for giving folks a heads up. Yep, absolutely. All right. This might be a, a re recent record for how quick we've gone through this meeting. So let me do the wrap up. So that was the CircuitPython Weekly for June 7th, 2021. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, then those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. 
The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available everywhere we know of. Uh, if you, uh, It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held... Drum roll. Let me look at my calendar. Uh, next week. Next Monday. Uh, our regular time. Uh, Katni is hosting. Uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. If you want to be notified about the meeting and the notes doc and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. And with that, we hope to see you all next week. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.